Well, the trip to Asia allows President Obama to uh, get into the region and uh, speak really for the first time on what his priorities are. It's, in my view, the Obama administration is playing for the long game in Asia. They're not looking to get quick and early scores because they're aiming to address really big problems. Uh, the top most of those being the financial crisis and its aftermath, rebalancing global economics. The second one is movement on climate change. Uh, and even though Copenhagen is coming up quickly, we're not going to get an early solution on that. And China has to have a, a participating role in the, addressing this. So it's playing for the long time. And then we have non-proliferation issues, including Iran and North Korea, and how to deal with Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, so people might wonder on this trip, why isn't Obama looking for deliverables, things he can come back with and say, coonskin on the wall, I've come back with this uh, T-shirt from Beijing. Well, he's not going to do that. He really is trying to work on bigger issues. And so critics will be able to point to uh, high rhetoric and little substance when this trip is over. I think that, um, that would be a mistake. I think we have to measure him more long term. There is risk that things can go wrong between ourselves and the Asians, and China in particular, uh, between now and the hopeful day of reaping a harvest from this trip. Um, but I think it's a sensible starting position for the administration. Um, moreover, uh, the last administration, the Bush second administration, really did kind of neglect East Asia. And when we focused on East Asia in, uh, in those years, we often focused only on Asian cooperation on terrorism. And we got to be sort of deaf to the concerns of the people out in the region who were dealing with a rising China in their neighborhood, uh, who want to have uh, a counterbalance to China in the U.S. And the U.S. also wasn't attending to its other interests, their commercial, social, educational, and the like. And so Obama is trying to say, okay, Asia, America's back. Don't count us out. We want in. We want to be involved with Southeast Asia. We want to be engaged with China. We want to be in a strong alliance with Korea and Japan. That's a long-winded way of saying that the, um, the Obama administration has pretty broad goals for this time, this trip. Well, the United States has been uh, sort of out to lunch in Asia. We uh, refused to sign the Treaty of Amity in cooperation with Southeast Asia, even though the Southeast Asians made this a, a prerequisite for greater American involvement in the region. Um, the U.S. has got extensive economic trade, investment, security, energy links to East Asia, but you wouldn't know that from the public behavior of our senior most officials. Uh, those people spent most of their time talking about terrorism, counterterrorism, Afghanistan, Pakistan being the focal point, Iraq, uh, or nuclear nonproliferation issues. And uh, we didn't handle the nuclear nonproliferation issues that very well, in fact when it came to North Korea, and, and North Korea has been uh, in a recalcitrant mood re uh, recently. Um, that needs attention. Uh, China's rise needs attention. Participation in the regional forums uh, required more high-level attention. And I think Obama's people are saying uh, America is back into these forums. We're not out of it. We have a, a range of interests to advance and defend in East Asia. And we're not going to come in there just because it's a favor to the East Asians. We, we're there for our own reasons. Uh, we've sort of recovered from our preoccupation with 9-11, and we're going to be addressing on a broader array of uh, issues America's strong interest in making progress. The U.S.-Japan alliance is coming under stress um, because the, there's a new party in power. And as with any American presidential transition from one party to another, the incoming people tend to want to turn over all that was achieved by the preceding party and look at it, not turn it over like you turn a rock over and examine it. Um, and sometimes you pull up some roots and you uh, create some troubles and you do that. That's to be expected. People live with that when every time we change party in the White House, and we're going to have to live with it with um, Japan. Japan's seek seeking a more equitable alliance uh, in the rhetoric of the campaign and the early days of the new Democratic Party of Japan's administration. And the Obama administration says it welcomes that. They would be glad to work with Japan to achieve it. 
Now that's good rhetoric. It's going to be a, a tough uh, promise to keep when you get down to working with individuals who have got very um, different levels of preparation on the su subtleties and um, and, the, and also the big truths about an alliance relationship. There's some big things you have to get right. And then there are a lot of little things like base locations, troop expenses, things like that that you have to get right as well. And finding missions in common in the world abroad, well, Japan's got restraints on its military roles, but it's certainly a big contributor on foreign assistance uh, and in uh, Japanese lead a host of international organizations under the UN system. And so Japan is a, is a big player, and, and we have to find a way of making our alliance harness more of what Japan is doing uh, in these other non-military areas while working hard to get the military side right. Because Japan does sit astride the rising power in the world in terms of military capabilities in China. Plus it has North Korea nearby, just to remind everybody that even a little power can be troublesome. The Obama administration talks about how it wants to use the Singapore meeting of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum to reify what's been decided by the G20, to get down into finer detail on how uh, each of the countries out there can, one, avoid protectionism, two, stimulate demand, and three, rebalance the global trading patterns so that more domestic consumption will drive the growth of our Asian trade partners because the United States' excessive consumption of the last decade will not be sustainable. Um, that'll probably be uh, reflected in high language, but not a lot of specific results in Singapore. The second big event in Singapore is the first meeting between an American president and the 10 members of the ASEAN uh, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Um, the United States president has not been able to meet with them before because of our concerns about having Burma represented in the group. The Obama administration undertook a review of Burma policy because the last 20 years of sanction and isolation have been unavailing in terms of our interests and actually have suited the interests of the Burmese regime. So now with this review, they've agreed that as elsewhere under Obama, they're going to be willing to talk to our adversaries even if we don't agree with them. And so we've started a direct dialogue with American officials and Burmese senior officials, and President Obama will meet in this group of 10 with the Burmese Prime Minister present as head of government. Um, I'm sure there'll be some criticism of this, but it's been rather strange for us to tell the nine countries we get along with that we won't meet with them because there's this 10th country we don't like. It's got, it's got the priorities uh, grabbed by the wrong end. And I think the Obama's done the right thing, one, to review policy toward Burma, and two, to take full advantage of his drawing power as leader of the world's most important country, uh, his drawing power as someone with a Southeast Asian personal background in five years in Indonesia as a child, and his drawing power just as a global personality to try to um, put America back on the stage. Chinese officials live nearby and they're there all the time. Uh, we're far away, it's harder to organize uh, important trips out to the region. But we've got to do our share and this is a big step forward. The centerpiece of Obama's travels to uh, East Asia, of course, will be his meetings in China. Obama has tried to uh, set a very high-minded, long-term agenda with the Chinese, and he's worked at it in a surprisingly positive way. Our last two presidencies, Clinton and Bush, both got off to rocky starts with the Chinese with tough rhetoric and some early incidents that took years to recover from, and we never really got past uh, negotiating niggling points on trade policy and uh, did not address the broad transnational agenda of uh, recovery from the financial crisis, uh, addressing climate, climate change, and dealing with nonproliferation and hot spots in Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Obama's approach has been to break with the pattern of the previous two presidencies, presidencies and to establish a positive agenda. He's worked hard to reach out to Chinese President Hu Jintao through phone calls, very substantial phone calls, in fact, and a, a host of meetings in, under the G20, the UNGA, and other, other auspices. Now they'll have some real sit-down time together in Beijing. 
gives a bit of face to the Chinese, also imposes a certain amount of obligation on the Chinese to be responsive to the issues we've asked them to be responsive to. Um, this is a new approach for the Chinese. We don't know how well they're going to do at it. China is a very inward-oriented country. It tends to do what its own political system wants, as uh, much as ours does. We, we respond first to our own concerns. Um, Obama will try to, I believe, will try to frame Chinese concerns and our concerns in ways that will appeal to Chinese self-interest, and that may not always be the case. Um, we have tough issues down the road. China is now developing maritime powers concomitant with the growth of its economy and its need to protect its um, import and export uh, lines of communication. But this is also taking China into parts of the world where we've been dominant and where we uh, have other participants in the maritime trade, other navies participate. But China has got unusual claims on territories in the South China Sea, the Yellow Sea and the sea, East China Sea. And uh, they're not in conformity with our understanding of the law of the sea. Things can happen as they did earlier this year where we had a brush up between our naval um, intelligence ships and Chinese Coast Guard and other vessels. Um, in space, we haven't reached it. The Bush administration took an all or nothing approach to space. China kind of responded to that with its own fairly aggressive anti-satellite program. Um, this could be a very expensive and wasting area of competition and uh, we at least need to explore how to avoid it or to create mechanisms to reduce incidents that could get our two countries at odds. And there are other things as well. It's our, our interest in political reform, religious freedom, autonomy for Tibet, in a, the uh, uh, decision of the Taiwanese people, whether or not they're going to be uh, independent or part of China or maintain an ambiguous status, uh, we believe is their decision, not China's. And that puts us at odds with the Chinese on occasion as well. Um, we probably have different views on, on the role of China in international financial institutions, although both agree there ought to be a greater role for China. And so there's a long list of things. Whenever you have two big economies, two huge populations bumping up against each other, there's going to be a lot more than just uh, happy music. I think that the stop in Korea this time really represents a, a punctuation point to what has been a, a paragraph of real improvements over the last year. But the Obama administration has made its contributions to improving relations with South Korea, but South Korea has made a lot of contribution as well. Um, the big issue hanging over our relationship with Korea is the Korea-U.S. free trade agreement known as CORUS. Uh, this agreement, uh, South Koreans agreed to a little over two years ago. Um, their people are growing impatient, not seeing the results of it. Uh, unfortunately, it got caught up in the American Democratic primary process last year. And although the agreement is overwhelmingly advantageous to the U.S. because of the different uh, tariff tables uh, that are involved, ours are very low, so Korea already has the access they want. Theirs are very high. We want to lower them through this agreement. Uh, but we've gotten stuck on the question of the export of American automobiles to their market and a large number of Korean automobiles to our market. Um, negotiations are taking place. I think they're not really negotiations to resolve the problem so much as negotiations to buy time until the mood in Congress improves toward free trade agreements and until Obama gets past his big domestic agenda on health care, climate change, and the like. He doesn't want to lose any votes on side issues involving trade with Korea. Um, this has been a frustration for the Korean government. Despite that, the Koreans have stepped up to help in Afghanistan. They have been continuing to implement very sensitive military adjustments where there are forces in Korea will move away from the DMZ with North Korea farther south. They'll be consolidated. The South is paying for the new facilities. It's paying for the housing. We're shipping our spouses and kids of servicemen over there for the first time, and they're building housing for them. So in lots of little ways and big ways, Korea has really um, been a very constructive partner. The Obama contribution to this has been to really bring North, South Korea into the consultation process leading up to talks with North Korea. Um, there may or may not be talks with North Korea that go somewhere. Uh, but at least the South Koreans don't feel, as they did in the latter Bush years, that they've been left out uh, or have been an afterthought. They genuinely are being consulted this time. Now Obama's going there to, to reify that. 
I'm sure there'll be an announcement in the next few days about movement toward uh, sending a, an envoy to North Korea to see whether the North Koreans are serious this time. We've had a couple of bad experiences negotiating with North Korea. We don't want to use force to resolve the problem. We, we should use diplomacy, uh, and we should explore diplomacy whenever it's on the table, but we shouldn't be fools about it. We should have tough standards. Uh, the government of Im Yong Bak in South Korea and the Obama administration seem to see eye to eye on setting a very high bar for success with negotiations and for even a high bar to start formal negotiations. Uh, we'll see whether this, the North is ready to, to move forward. This is a good basis for U.S.-South Korean relations. And as an outsider, I certainly hope we can get onto the free trade agreement because, one, it's beneficial for our economy, and two, it will strengthen all those other elements of the alliance relationship I've just been discussing.